start spreading the news, for it's time for Brian's Bomber Banter, presented by the MLB Talk 101. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the inaugural edition of Brian's Bomber Banter on this Friday, February 14th, 2014. I'm your host, Brian Danoff, and you'll be hearing my thoughts on all the latest news regarding the 27-time World Series champions, the New York Yankees. You can find me on Twitter at BrianD underscore MLB Talk and at the MLB Talk 101. And be sure to check out MLBTalk101.com your place for the most unique baseball coverage on the web. So I'm ready, you're ready, and let's do it here on Brian's Bomber Banter. (laughs) So welcome to the new show, welcome to the new season. Uh, You know, I thought it'd only be fitting to start the show when another Yankee season starts. You know, um, pitchers and catchers reported to Tampa, Florida today for the Yankees um, already. Plenty of storylines, plenty of things to talk about, and we will get to all of those later in the show. Um, Don't know if I'm going to be recording it on camera all the time, because it's just the hassle of looking nice, looking presentable, looking in the camera. Um, I do have notes, so I'm not going to try to act like I'm, you know, remembering everything I'm saying, but, um, you know... It's a good setup, and it's a show I've been wanting to do for a long time, and finally I have a great place to do it with the MLB Talk 101. You guys hopefully know me from the shows I've already done with the network um, via Google Hangout. You know, I've interviewed a bunch of great players and, and people, and I've talked to fans and analysts about all the latest news in Major League Baseball. You know, I will give my personal thoughts on some news regarding the the entirety of the major leagues on this show, but I do want to keep it mostly about the Yankees if I can, um, and I hope you guys enjoy it. You know, uh, it's been a long time that I've been on YouTube and discussing the Yankees, uh, but finally people are actually watching and seeing my content and giving me feedback, and, and it's so rewarding, and it's it it, it makes me want to do it you know, even more and to an even higher extent. So, you know, I'm hoping to get at least an episode a week out of Brian's Bomber Banter. Uh, I will, of course, still do my normal work with the network, writing articles, doing interviews. Um, We're actually setting up some pretty exciting interviews with some pretty big names. So watch out for that. Stay tuned to the channel. Stay tuned to the network. And I'm positive you won't regret it. And you know, we're growing day by day, and I'm proud to be, you know, one of the hosts, one of the co-owners of this network, and have this show be the very first show, you know, a weekly syndicated, I guess it's syndicated, a weekly show, uh, you know, on the network. So it, it's great, and I'm thrilled to be talking Yankees baseball with you guys. So, you know, the Yankees had a pretty busy winter. You know, we all know that. And of course, somehow, with each new story, there's more to talk about. And of course, this past Wednesday, shortstop Derek Jeter announced that this season will be his last, that he is retiring after 19 major league seasons. This will be his 20th. And it's uh, it's a sad day. You know, it is. It, it, it was very surprising the way he announced it, going to Facebook, releasing such a long message. Um, And I think that's what is more shocking about this. Not that he is retiring, but the way he did it. You know, because we never thought he would be a guy who would want the farewell treatment. We thought he'd be the guy who would retire after a season and make no big deal about it. But now, of course, he's going to get the farewell treatment like Chipper Chipper Jones did in 2012 and Mariano Rivera last season. And, you know, it's going to be great. There's no doubt about it. Um, But I just never thought we'd see this type of thing from Derek Jeter. But, you know, 
I had a feeling that this would be it. Some people were trying to say that he could play another two, three seasons. And I don't doubt that he could actually be on the field for two to three more seasons. But I just, I did not feel like he would be the same Derek Jeter, which would, you know, which would drive him to retire. I, I did not want to see him go out being a part-time player, hitting 250, and, and not being the same player we've known. You know, and I think Jeter doesn't want this either. I think he never has. He's been very quiet about his future. He's never wanted to discuss, um, you know, when his retirement would be. But I think he never wanted to go out. He never wanted to be forced out. And I think this way, he, of course, won't be. And no matter what happens this season, he's walking away. And he's walking away on top. Um... You know, I have high hopes for him. Everything I'm hearing this season is that he's in great shape and that he is ready to be the same player we've always known. And that is very promising. And I have a lot of confidence that he'll have a good season. Um, I'm not saying he's going to hit 330 and and hit 15 home runs and drive in 70 runs, but I mean, is it possible? I'm never going to be. I'm never going to doubt Derek Jeter. I did once before, um, very, very ferociously. So back in 2011, and then in 2012, he goes out and has, has one of the best seasons of his career. Um, I know there's a lot of, there's a lot more factors in it now than just age, his, his bulky ankle, um, you know, just, he hasn't played a full season now in a year, so it'll be interesting to see how he adapts to that, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be weird knowing that this is the last we'll be seeing of Derek Jeter, because you know, as a Yankee fan who started watching in the mid-2000s, Derek Jeter's all I know. Derek Jeter is is one of is one of two Yankees remaining from the first team I remember watching, and that was the 2006 Yankees. And who is the other one? Alex Rodriguez, who may in fact actually outlast Derek Jeter in New York, at least when you go by calendar years, because if he comes back next season... Jeter won't be there, and A-Rod would be the longest tenured Yankee, and it's crazy to think, but it's true. So, it's funny how that all works out like that, but, you know, I think Jeter, this is the right time for him to walk away. It's going to be it's gonna be emotional, it's going to be sad, I'm probably going to cry, but <laughs> it's, it's time to move on. You know, when Mariano Rivera and Andy Pettit retired last season, I felt like Jeter finally, set, finally started to think that you know, it's time to move on, so, um, wish him nothing but the best, and we still have one more season left of him, so let's hope number two can stay on the field, be one of the, you know, one of the better shortstops in the in Major League Baseball, and sentiment, sentimental reasons aside, that would be a huge boost to the Yankees, because they really need production out of the shortstop position out of, after they got basically nothing last season from the numerous guys who try to play the position. You know, Reed Brignac, Alberto Gonzalez, uh, Eduardo Nunez. Just, it was not, it was not pretty. And if Jeter can be that starting shortstop, that would be huge for many more reasons than just because this is his last season. So, um, you know, backtracking a little bit, the Yankees made a ton of moves this offseason. As I said, um, you know, they lost quite a few, you know, notable names. Of course, Rivera and Pettit retired. Robinson Cano went and signed a 10-year, $240 million contract with the Seattle Mariners. Phil Hughes went to the Twins. Jabba Chamberlain to the to the Tigers. Um, you know, Boone Logan to the Rockies. Mark Reynolds to the Brewers. Um, Kevin Euclid to the Golden Eagles. I mean, <laughs> you know, they really, they, they lost a lot of uh, notable names. But, uh, you know, they of course brought in catcher Brian McCann, Carlos Beltran, Jacoby Ellsbury, and, of course, from the Golden Eagles, from Japan, Masahiro Tanaka. Uh, that was a huge signing, and it was an exciting offseason because it seemed like every other week the Yankees were making a big move. It was kind of just, you were wondering when it would happen, and, you know, personally, I was always a guy who was looking forward to the Yankees becoming a more budget-conscious um, team. But in New York, you spend big. That's just the way it is. I, I realize that, you know, 
every team, every team in New York does not, does not rebuild the way most teams do. You know, even the New York Mets, even the Mets, they still have David Wright. They still have that superstar power. They, they still, they went out and signed Curtis Granderson. Of course, I forgot to mention him. He is now a New York Met. And, you know, they still sign guys and they sign big names. And that's just the way it goes in New York. And that's the way it goes in these big markets. And you really can't, nowadays, with the way free agency is in every single league, you really will not see too many homegrown, centered clubs. So, you know, these moves were necessary. The Yankees needed a big upgraded catcher. They needed, um, I didn't think they needed Ellsbury, but, you know, he'll add a ton of production at the top of the lineup. One of the best leadoff hitters in the game, if not the best. Um, Beltron, his veteran presence, his, his consistent hitting. Um, and for all three of those guys, the short porch and right field is going to definitely boost their power numbers. Um, some people are saying 30, 35 home runs maybe for McCann this year and maybe even Beltron. Um, if they can stay healthy, I wouldn't doubt it. Um, and then with Tanaka, he's the great unknown. You know, we don't know what to expect, but his stuff has looked great in the highlights I've seen, and, and the Yankees have scouted him for many years. So I'm confident they made a good decision here. I'm confident that Tanaka will be a good pitcher for the Yankees. Maybe he won't be the ace, and maybe he won't ever be worth the money he's making, but I don't see him being a bust. I really don't. You know, if, he's a, if he is the number three starter, Brian Cashman is planning on him being this season. That's all the Yankees can ask for, and that is that would be great in his first season in New York. So, you know, I mean, a lot of things happen this offseason. The Yankees really do have a much different team besides Derek Jeter and Mark Teixeira and maybe CeCe Sabathia. The rest of the team is, is, is pretty much unrecognizable. You do have, of course, Kuroda and Nova are, is ba are back. Robertson is back, but he is now the closer. And, I mean... You know, that is going to be interesting to watch. Um, you know, and it's just, this is a, it's an exciting season. It's going to be an exciting season. And, you know, it's kind of interesting because I don't know what to expect. Because I could see this team winning anywhere between 85 to 100 games. You know, their bullpen is, is unstable. Their rotation, despite being filled out, has a lot of question marks. You know, will CeCe Sabathia's weight loss finally be beneficial this season? Will Kuroda be able to stay healthy and stay consistent throughout the whole year? Will Nova be the guy he was at the end of last season? Or will he revert back to early 2013 and 2012 where he was terrible, you know? Um, and then Tanaka, no matter what I may think, he could be terrible. Um, so, I mean, there is a lot of ifs. And in the infield, don't know what to expect out of Kelly Johnson, Derek Jeter, will he stay on the field? Brian Roberts, will he stay on the field? Mark Teixeira, will he stay on the field? I mean, you know, there is a lot, a lot of question marks on this team. If everything goes right, I think they will be one of the best teams in baseball. But if anything goes south, we could be talking about another 2013. Not to the extent of all the injuries, but to the extent of the inconsistent play and ultimately not getting into the playoffs because there's a lot of good teams. This isn't like 2009 where it was the Yankees and the Red Sox in the division and the Orioles and the Blue Jays were doormats and the Rays were decent. Literally every team can now play with each other and we've seen that and, you know, none of these teams in the division are... are going to roll over. I mean, yes, the Orioles and Blue Jays still are probably the worser teams in the division, but they're still going to play hard. The Red Sox are the defending champions. you got to give them the benefit of the doubt right now. They lost Jacoby Ellsbury, of course, Jared Saltzlamakia, Steven Drew, but they brought back the same pitching staff, added Edward Mujica. You know, the Rays... Um, brought back the same team, and they were very powerful. A full season of Chris Archer, you know, David Price, James Loney, Elvin, Evan Longoria, Will Myers, a full season of him. They're going to be dangerous. And the Blue Jays have a young core, still have R.A. Dickey, still have Jose Reyes. I could totally see them bouncing back and being a solid team this season. 
especially if they sign a guy like Irvin Santana or Ubaldo Jimenez, that would be huge. Um, and in the rest of the league, you know, the Yankees, are, you know, if they can't win the division, they're fighting for two wild card spots. And I can name three, four teams that are just as good as the Yankees right now, if not better. You know, the A's, the Rangers, the Indians, um, the Tigers, you know, uh, the Royals could be up there. Certainly, they could be very good. I, I think they will be very good this season. So, you know, it's not black and white that if the Yankees are good, they'll be in the playoffs. If the Yankees are bad, they won't be. The Yankees could be a good team this season and still not make it. So that's why they need all these pieces to fall into place. And I'm not so, so, so sure that they will. Um, but, you know, getting away from the negative talk, I guess. Uh, you know, that's just my kind of outlook on the season um, before I actually make predictions. But, you know, spring training's here, and, and it's exciting either way you put it. Um, it's, it's great to have baseball back, and, um, you know, there's a, lot of que- there's a lot of headlines going into spring training. And, you know, a lot, of, a lot of questions that I may have now won't be answered until the regular season, like, will David Robertson be a good closer? Um, will Brian McCann adjust to the American League hitters as a catcher we adjust to the pitching staff all that stuff really gets sorted out in the regular season but there's some competitions going on and there's some um debate in, in, in you know with the team right now so you know I, I just i outlined a few questions as i said i have some notes i've been looking at you guys for a while all right so just just give me a second to just check my notes um <laughs> but you know so headlines going into spring training um, I think one of them, and it's been this for as long as I can remember being a fan, who is the fifth starter? You know, the Yankees have never really had a complete rotation. Never really, they've never done it. Um, and I mean, it's exciting when there is that last type of rotation spot because it adds more meaning to watching young pitchers pitch in spring training games. And it adds more meaning to the games. You know, it's not like, you know, once the the starting lineup is subbed out, you stop watching. No. If Michael Pineda's still pitching, if Adam Warren, David Phelps, if they're still in there, I'm going to keep watching because I want to see what they have. And I want to see if they have the stuff that'll, you know, require them, that'll require, that'll be required of them to be the fifth starter. Um, my early bet is on Michael Pineda. I think he's in shape. I think he has great stuff. I think, um, you know, I watched highlights of him last season. He was shut down, I think, for probably shoulder soreness or something like that but he says he's in shape he looks he looked really good in a few of his rehab starts last season I'm confident he'll at least get the chance to pitch for the Yankees this season um and you know whoever wins the fifth spot though it helps the bullpen because whoever loses it goes to the bullpen I don't think David Phelps is going to go to the minors I don't think Adam Warren's going to go to the minors um so I think that would help huge you know um David Phelps last season um, it was because he was kind of rushed back, but he was used late in the game as a, as a one or two inning reliever rather than a long man. Um, I think he has value there. If the Yankees really are struggling with the bullpen early on in the season, I think it's the same thing with Phil Hughes in 2009, that he may not be a great starter, but if you give him one inning with all his stuff, I think he could be dominant. I think David Phelps, I would watch out for him to be maybe a, a dark horse in the setup man race. If all goes right, I just have that feeling that, you know, he he really, he has the stuff to be a great reliever. And I, I just think if Michael Pineda wins that fifth spot and if the whole rotation does well, Phelps has no value as a long man because you have Adam Warren. And Warren is very good as a long man. So, you know, the Yankees are set either way, I think, when, with the, when it comes to the fifth starter spot. And um, there's question marks with all three of those guys, but I think Pineda is... Will, will has the highest ceiling for this season, you know what I mean? And um, I hope it's Pineda, because I finally want to see this dude get a chance, and I finally want to see him pitch, and it's been a long time. That trade made two years ago with the Mariners, a lot of stuff has happened since then, and um, if, if Pineda can even be a league average starter this year, the Yankees instantly win the trade, um, because Jesus Montero has really fallen off, you know, had a pretty bad season, his first season with Seattle. Then hit so poorly last season, he got sent down. Then he tore his meniscus. Then he got suspended because of biogenesis. 
So he's really fallen off too. This isn't like the Yankees made a terrible decision. Or the, you know, it's not the Yankees made a terrible decision. It's both sides made a terrible decision. But if Pineda can at least become an average starter, that's a huge plus for the Yankees. And that is, you know, way more than I think they were expecting him to be after last season. Because I think we all thought that if he wasn't coming up last season, when is he going to get a chance? When is he going to pitch? And... I think that time will finally be now. I think I think he will make the team. I think no matter what, either he's going to be a starter or he's going to be in the bullpen. Um, I think he could be, do well in the bullpen too. So, you know, we'll see there. Um, you know, you have to ask, is Mark Teixeira healthy? And that's another big question mark about this season. And, and he really is a huge factor into the Yankees' potential success this year because, you know, Teixeira went healthy. Even if he's not the 300 hitter he was with the Angels and the Rangers and, and the Braves previously, he's still a, a shoe in for 30 home runs, 100 RBI, gold glove defense, and, I mean, yeah, he, he just those things alone makes him still one of the top first basemen in baseball. Is he going to put that production in this season is what is the big question here. And, you know, we've seen Jose Bautista have the same type of surgery and came back and still is a very potent power hitter. He's not the same guy he was two, three seasons ago when he was hitting 50 home runs. But he still hit, I think, 20. I think it was in the high 20s last season in home run total. Um, you know, was still a pretty decent hit hitter, stayed healthy. So, you know, people and Teixeira are saying that He's still a soreness in his wrist, and he's still a little tight in his wrist. Um, and I think that is what is expected. And I don't think that's as big of an issue now as it will be maybe in three, four weeks. You know, if it's mid-March, late March, and Teixeira is looking terrible at the plate, and and he's saying his wrist is bothering him, then that really gets me concerned. But right now, I think Teixeira will be all right. I think the, the wrist soreness will go away. Um, but... That is going to be huge, Teixeira and Jeter, and that is the. This is the that for when it comes to position players, I think you know you can expect Beltron to stay healthy, and and hit well. Same with Ellsbury. Same with McCann. Um, same with basically every other hitter in the Yankees order. Um, Teixeira and Jeter are the guys who missed most of last season, and they have to prove themselves again. And you know Jeter probably won't play in any spring games until I'd say the first or second week of, week of March. Um, same with probably Teixeira. I think they're going to take it very slow, both of them. Um, and, you know, this those two guys are are huge. I, I've said it already. Are, are so important to the Yankees' success this season. And I think we'll have a pretty good idea of, of the type of players they'll be at the end of the, at the, end of the spring. If, if they're healthy, I think they'll be close to the same players they've been if they're not. I don't know if they'll even play. So that's why I'm really on the fence about the season. I have really no no idea of what to expect. Because as I said, I could see the Yankees making the playoffs. I could see them winning the World Series. I really can. But I could also see things falling apart where they finish in second, third, fourth place and, and miss the playoffs again. So, I mean, and, you know, another guy who, who pays into it, who, who plays into this whole thing is CC Sabathia. Of course, you know, will the weight loss finally help? Will he become an ace once again? Um, you know, personally, I think he's in shape, and I think he'll do better than last season. Um, I think anyone who is expecting him to be the ace, who throws 95 miles per hour and goes eight innings a night with 130 pitches, I think anyone who thinks that is is wrong. I don't think he's going to be that type of guy again. But will he be an innings eater? And will he be able to keep that ERA maybe hovering around or under four? Yes. I think I think if Sabathia is healthy, and the way he said it, he says he feels great, his bullpen sessions are going well, all that stuff, I think CC Sabathia will be a reliable pitcher this season and will be a good pitcher. He may not be an ace again, but he'll be... He'll be there, and he and he. You can rely on him to make those adjustments and, and to mix his pitches. And 
Um, I really expect Sabathia to do well. That is, you know, along with along with Jeter, Sabathia is a, one, another one of those guys who I really feel strongly about. I really feel they will have good seasons. So, um, you know, I mean, and then Tanaka, I mean, you know, we'll see how he throws in his first few spring training games and 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 if his stuff is translating and and if he and if he has good chemistry with Brian McCann and um you know that will also probably be answered more in the regular season but um you know I I this spring training is going to be interesting this season is going to be interesting and uh you know it's it's going to be great though I think either way it's going to be an exciting season I think it'll be full of things to talk about and full of stories and, and full of great moments no matter what. Um, so, you know, that's pretty much it. This was kind of, you know, I guess you call it a soft launch. It wasn't necessarily organized, this show. You know, I want to bring on some guests some weeks to talk with me and, and debate the news about the Yankees. You know, when the season starts, of course, I'll be able to talk about the games they played and, and all that, you know, that'll make it a lot easier to talk about things for the show. But for now, I guess you can call this my thoughts entering spring training and and my feeling about the team and, and Derek Jeter's retirement. And, um, you know, I'm really looking forward to this show. Um, the MLB Talk 101 is doing so well and it's going to do so many great things this season. And you want to stick around, not only for my show, but for every other show that's launching, for everything we already do with our website, with the interviews. Um, and I I'm very excited. I, I can't stress that enough. I am pumped for this season, not just for the Yankees, not just for Major League Baseball, but for the MLB Talk 101 and for my show, and I think it's going to be great, and I thank you guys for watching, and stay tuned for next week when I'll be back for episode two, and we'll finally get the show on the road. So, uh... Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you guys have a good night. Go Yankees. And the biggest thing to take from this is baseball's back. And there is nothing better than baseball. <laughs> so thanks again. And I hope you guys all have a great night.